Hey everyone, what's up and welcome to this week's weekly roundup where we'll be bringing you up to date with what's been happening in the WoW PvP scene. To kick things off, let's take a look at the most recent round of hotfixes, which buff the damage of a ton of classes while also offering a few additional tuning on some key abilities. We've seen damage buffs handed out to Frost DKs, Demon Hunters, Beast Mastery and Survival Hunters, Frost Mages, Assassination Rogues, Enhancement Shamans, Destro Warlocks, and DPS Warriors. While some of these buffs are not too significant, a few stand out as ones that might actually impact the meta quite a bit. The most likely candidates receiving damage buffs that could push the meta further in one direction are the Frost DKs, Enhancement Shamans, and Arms Warriors. This all comes down to the fact that both Turbo and TSG are already strong performing comps, so it's no surprise that we might see both of these comps start to show up more on ladder, especially Turbo, which is currently a very strong composition seeing a lot of success at the top of the ladder with players like Zpi being spotted, doing incredibly well with it in the past week. Alongside these buffs though, a handful of nerfs have been handed out to try and balance things a little, with Chill Street getting a 10% damage nerf to prevent Frost DKs from getting a little too out of hand. Despite that nerf though, we definitely think Frost will start performing better as their overall damage will still be getting buffed and Chill Streak will remain a potent threat and something Frost DK should continue looking to play around and set up. The remaining damage buffs are all to classes that don't really perform too well right now, and we don't expect any of them to suddenly start popping up at the top of the ladder, although it certainly may breathe new life into comp variety as players may be more willing to test comps that haven't been seen too much recently with the Destro Warlock and Assassination Rogue buffs having the most potential to change things up, if only a little. Beyond the damage buffs, we've actually seen a very significant and meaningful nerf to the Warrior PvP talent Master and Commander. Previously, this talent allowed Warriors to bring their Rallying Cry down to a 60 second CD, which was playing a huge role in their ability to keep their teammates alive, especially when paired with the Inspiring Presence Conduit. Overall, while the damage changes are not significantly geared toward PvP, we're glad to see some of these underrepresented specs get buffs. However, the Warrior, Frost DK, and Enhanced ones are a little questionable, given that they are already doing quite well damage-wise in PvP. Still, we're glad to see Chill Streak was toned down before Frost DK's got a damage buff, and the Master and Commander nerf was definitely something that at least needed to be looked at. With that being said, given the recent results in the AWC, we're very surprised that Holy Paladins and Prop Paladins haven't been touched, especially when you consider how vocal the community is being about those specs. And speaking of Prop Paladin and the AWC, this past weekend's tournament was filled with surprises as the Team Creed piloted a Prop Paladin into the European Top 3. A surprise to everyone, Drainer, one of Europe's top healers, threw a curveball at those in the tournament by filling his Team Healer role as a Prop Paladin in the Comp Warrior Mage Paladin. Not only did they make the top three, they did so in style, taking out the first Cups finalist, Oldness Strikes, and the fourth place team, Reload Esports, in order to get there. This has definitely led to a ton of complaints with the PvP community being vocal about their dissatisfaction with a tank spec managing to take teams into very deep dampening without a healer on their team. Through a combination of frequent access to immunities thanks to the PvP talent Guardian of Forgotten Queen, and the talent Blessing of Spell Warding, along with Steed of Glory making them incredibly difficult to CC, it's no surprise that we've finally seen a team start to abuse this broken spec. Their toolkit is quite substantial. While it's not common to see prop paladins running around at the top of the ladder, it still brought a lot of controversy onto the AWC stream, and it will be interesting to see if Drainer's team can continue their success in the coming weeks, and if the spec will be touched in any way. With all that said, what do you all think about this whole prop paladin ordeal? Does it add some excitement to see a non-traditional comp perform well in tournaments, or are you against tank specs being a thing in PvP? Let us know your thoughts below and what you'd like to see happen to the spec. Anyway, despite the prop paladin showing, we ultimately saw them lose to Method in the lower bracket finals, before eventually seeing our team, Skillcapped EU, take the crown against Method in the upper finals. They did so with an absolutely commanding performance on our comp of the week, Ellie Mage Holy Paladin. While Skillcapped EU faltered in the first cup, losing to Method in the upper bracket before dropping down and losing to the Ret Warrior of Oldness Strikes, they brought it back this past weekend, sticking to what they do best with Zpi and Maro having exceptional performances on the Elemental Shaman and Fire Mage, while Asgrath certainly held his own on the Holy Paladin. And speaking of Fire Mages and Holy Paladins, the North American Cup had the same result as two weeks ago, 
with last year's North American champions, Kawhi once again being victorious with their Windwalker Monk, Fire Mage, Holy Paladin comp. We're definitely starting to see a theme here, with Holy Paladins just reigning supreme over the other healers. So once again, it is a surprise that they haven't really been toned down to open up the meta and allow other healers to perform just as well. Next up, the dates for this year's online BlizzCon have finally been announced being on February 19th and 20th. And although we don't think too much huge WoW-related news is going to come out, one thing that we do expect to hear is the release date of TBZ. A Reddit user recently posted a handful of leaks, including a May 2021 release date. And while all leaks should be taken with a grain of salt, a summer 2021 release for TBC sounds plausible, and we won't be surprised if this is announced during the online BlizzCon. So with TBC potentially looming just around the corner, how excited are you all for some level 70 PvP? Are you planning to take it seriously and fight for an old school gladiator mount and title on the classic TBC servers? We think it's definitely going to be interesting to see what a modern approach to arena is going to look like in the first iteration of the game mode. And before we leave you, we've got a quick announcement to make for a new format of video we'll be releasing later this week. We're teaming up with a bunch of pros to bring you all a podcast covering top players' thoughts on the meta, and we'll even be picking from some of the questions on our Discord, which you can join via the link in the description below. So if you're interested in getting questions answered by some of the world's best players, including those from the Skillcapped EU 2021 roster, be sure to join our Discord before the end of the week and submit your question. Anyway, that's it for this week's roundup of PvP news. Stay tuned for next week, but for now, be sure to like the video and hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.